Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, thanks to the team over at Bombusby, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new DNA Design DK32 upgrade kit for the Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobot Slug. Now for those of you looking to add this to the collection, I'll of course be sure to pack a link down in the description box below. And here is a very quick look at the package. So at the front we do get a cool image of Slug with the all new exosuit. And here at the back it does show you some of the contents that this pack includes. So all that being said, let's crack this open and actually take a closer look at some of these accessories and so here is everything that we get in this pack and I'm gonna be completely upfront with you guys and say for $40 this is not worth it whatsoever you really can't tell me that this is $40 worth of plastic and engineering I just think this is an insult to collectors DNA design appeared to be massively dropping the ball in regards to some kits as of late which is such a shame as for the last three years they've had a pretty positive track record but in the case of this set I just think they are way off I have no idea as to why they've actually given us a transforming exosuit, especially considering that we've literally just got one officially by Hasbro, which if truth be told, I think for the price point and just overall is much better when in comparison to this version. But nevertheless, we'll very quickly go over what we do get included. And first of all is the Dinobot Slug Sword. Now this is a much needed accessory, of course. None of the Studio Series Dinobots come with some of their classic sword accessories. So it's awesome to see this packaged in, but I just do not think this justifies the $40 price tag at all. I do like the pink transparent plastic that we have here for the sword and the sculpt work appears to be super sharp and crisp you can see we have a much darker red used for the handle and I'll be sure to showcase how this can actually store on the figure in just a second we also do get included a shield adapter now this is mainly what you'll be using this for in robot mode in terms of dino mode these horns can actually attach onto the actual triceratops itself but as you can see the sculpt work looks decent I do think the plastic looks to be on the slightly cheaper side had they cast these horns out of a slightly more metallic red like we're seeing from the actual transparent sword itself I think they maybe would have looked slightly better but in person they do look very generic and rather bland decent sculpt work here for this top section but you do need to part to form a certain piece of the robot mode in order to maximize the look of this which I'll showcase in just a second and we also do get included an exosuit which whilst is a vast improvement when in comparison to the original static figure that came with the leader slug I don't think is as good as the most recent core offering that we saw from Hasbro but once again I'll be sure to touch base with this guy in just a second let's very quickly bring out slug to showcase how some of these weapons can actually attach onto the robot mode so first up of course here we have the sword the most important accessory to come out of this upgrade kit in my opinion and as many of you guys will expect it can be slid into the hand just like this and proportion wise I think it looks amazing it really does complete the look of slug and to be honest as far as the sword accessories are concerned DNA design have been doing a great job but I'm quite confused as to why they don't just wait until Hasbro have released all of the Dinobots and then give us a five pack of Dinobot swords as packaging them in with additional accessories which let's be honest especially in the case of this pack are pretty useless I just don't see it justifying the overall price point but he does look really cool whilst wielding this if you don't wish to actually have him using this what you can do is peg this section here into any of the slots that we have for the hips so just to showcase how that looks I actually think this is a pretty neat design I do like how it does appear to be slung over the top section of the thigh but it does make the hip joints pretty much useless unless you have them completely straightened out as you begin to hinge them out it does just apply way too much pressure than I like and of course it will pop it off or alternatively you can use this tab and attach it onto any of the mech tech ports that we may have scattered throughout the figure and then the final accessory at least as far as slugs robot mode is concerned is this shield adapter now you can remove the horns and switch them out with the ones that you'll see in the triceratops mode but I am actually going to be holding off on that until we get this guy transformed up its main purpose is to come around here to the back and actually detach the tail from this section so basically you do just want to pry it off some friction nubs which I'm not a massive fan of doing but it will simply detach like so and then we can just stow away all of the back kibble just like that what we can then do is bring in the shield attachment and here on the back we do get two tiny cutouts that essentially these two nubs will slide into so just snap them into place and here we have the shield for slug to use whilst in robot mode now undeniably this is actually a really cool look but without parts forming this section is pretty much useless and I know there'll be some collectors out there that won't be too keen on essentially detaching the tail section as no doubt over time you may begin to wear out some of those friction 
action nubs. But yeah, it definitely looks pretty sweet. We do get a handle here at the back, so it can be pegged on to any of the 5mm posts. So just to showcase how that looks, you'll want to slide it into the hand. And there you have Slug utilizing this shield. And I think design-wise, it definitely fits the look of the character. But considering that we're dealing with an upgrade kit, it really is beyond me as to why they didn't include any type of filler pieces here for the feet. It was something that we saw included on the Grimlock here. And considering that this is super pricey, I definitely think a few filler pieces wouldn't have gone amiss. And I also think they should have found a way to have given us a transparent Triceratops head. We also saw them include some transparent sections to almost recreate the toy Grimlock look with that upgrade kit. So no idea as to why we aren't seeing something similar here with this figure. And just overall, I do think this is a massive missed opportunity. Now, I'll very quickly bring in the exosuit for now just to showcase how it does integrate into the robot mode. So we do get the same posts here on the underside of the legs, which will peg into some tabs on the shoulders. And it works in the exact same way as the static minifig that was originally included. And that pretty much wraps it up as far as upgrade components go here for the robot mode. So let's get Slug transformed up into the dino mode, and then we'll go into more detail in regards to the exosuit. Now, as far as the dino mode goes, I actually think the upgrades make less of a contribution here when in comparison to the minor contribution that they made to the robot mode. So first of all, they do showcase us actually displaying the sword by snapping it here into the mech tech port on the shoulder. Personally, I think this is a super dumb look. I would have much rather had them found a way to have perhaps stored it somewhere in here. Maybe had they created an almost flight port on this section, you would have been able to attach it somewhere in this hollow void. So that too is a missed opportunity to go back to my earlier point. I definitely think they could have put some filler pieces in these sections or even in the base here of the feet or some filler pieces for this. There's just so many missed opportunities where this set goes in my opinion but we do want to bring this adapter piece in and basically what you do is pop off the horns just like this and for those who own this figure you guys will know that the actual horns that already come with this guy can be very easily detached so you simply do just snap them off like so bring these ones in and peg them here into place and this is supposed to replicate his original 80s toy look which whilst I do think it does a good job I have no idea as to why they didn't take this further why on earth didn't they package in some transparent sections for the actual Triceratops head it really is beyond me it was something that we saw with their upgrade kit for Grimlock so we know they can do it I really do just think they've become lazy with this kit and definitely have cheapened out and what they suggest you do is take these horns which originally came with the figure and snap them into this but at least on my copy they just do not want to grip all that well in at all as you can see it doesn't take much whatsoever for them to become detached so at least as far as this look is concerned it's pretty much impossible for me to replicate I bet you guys as soon as I peg them in they're just gonna yeah see they just keep wanting to fall off so basically what you are supposed to do is attach these onto these sections and then the port that we've got created out of the handle should snap into a slot here on the side which doesn't look bad and it would have the horns attached so just to kind of replicate how that would look. I just am not liking how that's coming across at all and they don't even stay fixed into place. So yeah, as far as the dyno mode integration is concerned, I think this kit is yet again a massive flop. And then we take a look at the final accessory, that of course being the all new and improved exosuit. Now truth be told, had we not seen the Studio Series core class version, then I think this would have come across a lot more impressive than what it is as it stands. But considering that we've already got that figure released at a $10 price point, I just do not think the $40 that DNA Design are asking for this set is justified at all and if I'm going to be honest I actually get more enjoyment out of the Hasbro version when in comparison to this one but it's still not a bad exosuit especially when in comparison to the original version of the suit that we saw packaged in with Slug. Now detail wise they sadly haven't been able to improve on the paint apps much like we saw from Hasbro and if anything the head sculpt that is embedded within the dome looks slightly worse. It is just simply this pale beige colour they haven't picked out any of the details whatsoever in paint. It nearly is just the sculpt which actually looks pretty decent I believe this is supposed to be Daniel and we do get some all right head articulation it can rotate left to right but it isn't on a cool slider joint like we saw from the Hasbro release and the dome is removable so for those of you who are into customization I imagine you could paint this up to perhaps look pretty decent as we take a look here at the overall suit design in itself I think it looks okay the chest piece does appear at least to me to be a lot smaller and a little more thin when in comparison to the show but what they have been able to improve upon when compared to the core 
lower class is the backpack. This looks super clean, but I don't think the arms look great. The scop work isn't that cool, especially as we come in here to the inside. I don't like the way the hands appear to just simply jut out, and unlike the Hasbro release, he doesn't actually have proper rolling wheels, but the detail and the paint here for the legs doesn't look too bad. I think design-wise looks pretty much on point to what we saw in the original show, and even here from the back also, it looks okay. Now, he does include one accessory, that being this pistol, but there's barely any detail on this at all, and to be honest, it does look rather cheap and has merely just been cast out of grey plastic, and considering that I've mentioned it so much, let's bring in the Hasbro version. So here we have the $10 core class release, compared alongside our DNA version. Now, personally, I do not think that there is a contest here at all. This one looks so much cooler. I just think the colours are a lot more appealing, the proportions, especially where the chest unit goes, is a lot nicer looking, and the head also, despite it being pretty faceless, has a lot more paint when in comparison to this DNA design version. So sadly, I'm unable to really give this a recommendation if you are just solely after this transforming version of the exosuit. But as we come around here to the back, like I mentioned, I do think the back looks a little cleaner here on this release when in comparison to the Hasbro version, but this actually has proper rolling wheels, whereas sadly, this new exosuit does not. Now, before we jump into transformation, articulation-wise, as showcased previously, the head can be rotated if you do take the dome off. We do get a full rotation here at the shoulders, hinge joint out to the sides, ball joints at the elbows, but due to the nature of the design, they have been cut a little wonky, so unless you actually angle them out, you're really not going to get much range out of them at all. Surprisingly, we do get a waist rotation, which is mainly due to transformation. The hips can kick forwards that far, back, I'd say just to that far, they are heavily compromised due to this butt flap, but they can kick out to the sides. We do get a swivel here at the thigh, 90 degree bend at the knee, and surprisingly, the feet are actually on ball joints, so we can rock them side to side as well as forwards and back. So I guess the ankle articulation is an improvement when in comparison to the core class, but that is literally the only positive I can see here when compared to that figure. And the legs are super floppy and flimsy. And truth be told, I haven't actually had this for that long. So definitely not a great sign. Now, in terms of transformation, you are going to want to remove the blaster. We can take the dome and rotate it so that these white sections are now facing towards the ground. What you'll then want to do is basically, as you can see, there is this circular cutout. You're going to want to rotate this section, which can be a lot easier said than done, as the actual tabs that you have to move are very minute, which will basically pull the cutout in alignment with this cutout here. So once that's done, we can just compress that. Repeat the same process here for this side. So what you have to do is swivel. It's very difficult to get in there, but swivel that around just like that. We can then rotate here at the waist. The heel spurs will hinge up and slide into this hollow cavity. The feet will also peg there into place. You'll then want to collapse the knee joints into the shins, combine these two sections, and then finally for some finishing touches, there is a tab here that will slide into this slot and also a tab that will peg into this slot here. So just snap all of that there into place and then we have the exosuit fully transformed up into its alt mode now this actually looks a lot cleaner when in comparison to the Hasbro offering but I have no idea as to why they didn't find a way to actually put proper rolling wheels on this guy it does look sleek and kind of matches what we saw from the original animation as you can see we have the thrusters at the back the head actually folds up much like we saw in the show we do get the hand sticking out to the front and design wise it looks cool but it is basically just a white plastic brick there really isn't much you can do here in this mode at all and as far as the weapon and storage goes the instructions do mention basically you slide the gun into this slot but it is a very loose grip so I definitely wouldn't recommend leaving it in there especially if you do plan to play around with this when in alt mode and for a very quick comparison to the Hasbro offering this is the only mode where I actually think it is an improvement when in comparison to the original version but as an overall package I still have to give it to the Hasbro offering I do just think this is a lot more enjoyable a lot more simplistic to transform and the robot mode is a lot cooler looking at least in my opinion when in comparison here to the DNA design offering. And so, some final thoughts for the DNA Design DK32 upgrade kit for the Transformer Studio Series Dinobot Slug. In all honesty, I cannot recommend this kit to you guys, and I'm super sorry to say, but I just don't think we get enough value for money here. The accessories really don't do it for me at all. This is dubbed as an upgrade kit, but really and truly should have been called an accessory kit, as there aren't actually any upgrade components in this at all, unless you count the red horns, which, let's be honest, are something that is a personal preference. They're not actually an upgrade. They 
don't improve on anything that was already previously seen. They are just simply a different color, a different shade to what we already saw. I think it could have been easily remedied had they packaged in some filler pieces, much like we saw from their upgrade kit with Grimlock. And considering that they did go ahead and include those toy accurate red horns, I have no idea as to why they didn't try and give us some kind of transparent see-through dome for the head. I definitely think that's something they could have done, and it appears to me as if though DNA design are just becoming lazy. I think the integration of the weapons in the Dino mode is really bad. The way the sword just sticks out of the arm is terrible. They definitely could have found a way to have made that fold up and store away in some of the hollow spaces within the torso. I don't like the way the shield attachment pegs onto the shoulder either. And in terms of how you actually form the shield when in robot mode, I just think it's lazy. Why didn't they just give us an actual shield instead of making us parts form with the figure? It just is completely beyond me. I'm not happy with this at all. I think as far as the exosuit is concerned, whilst it is a marked improvement when in comparison to the version that we saw originally included with Slug, I don't think it's that much of an upgrade when in comparison to the Hasbro offering. The only thing that I can see that is appealing with this version is that the alt mode is slightly cleaner, but then that doesn't include any rolling wheels, and he does have ankle pivot for the actual robot mode. But other than that, there's really nothing here which I think stands out when in comparison to that Grimlock kit, and judging by their recently revealed Dinobot Sludge, I'm also going to have a lot to say about that, as they haven't appeared to fix one of the glaring issues with that, that being the feet sticking out in the Dino mode, which is just nuts. Why create an upgrade kit if you're not going to fix one of the biggest issues that has plagued that Transformer. I just don't know what they're playing at at the moment. So yeah, I'm sorry to say this doesn't get a recommendation for me, but for those who are interested in picking this up, I will of course be sure to pack a link down in the description box below to Bombuspi. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below, and until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.